Once Upon a Time Stories from Leicester Library's Neighbourhood Services. I'm Sandy and my story today is called The King with Dirty Feet. And it's from India, so he's a Raja, really. Not a king, but king or Raja. That means you can do anything you like. And king or Raja, that means you don't have to do anything you don't like. Can you guess what the king didn't like? Eating cabbage? No. Uh, brushing his hair? No. It was having a bath. Washing. That king hated it, so he didn't do it. What he liked to do was go and play outside. Now, everyone in those days had bare feet, no socks and shoes. And the king loved to feel the grass under his feet and the insects in his toes and sometimes squelch, squelch, squelch and splat, stamp his feet in the mud down by the royal river. But of course, he didn't wash. So after a while, I'm afraid, he began to smell and everyone started to talk about it. King smelly feet, look out, here comes the big whiff. Oh, oh dear, said the king. I think I'm gonna have to have a wash. Well, when the queen heard, yes, she was thrilled. She called the royal servants to get down to that royal river which was where everyone washed in those days, and get it ready for a royal bath. So off went the servants with the royal towel and the royal soap and the royal toy duck and little plastic boats, and here comes the king in his royal bathrobe. Everybody cheered when he stepped into the river. Hooray! Clean at last. The king he washed his royal hands. He washed his royal face, he washed his royal hair, he washed his royal everywhere. And then he stepped out onto the land and he looked down at his feet. They were covered in dust. Oh, bother, I must have missed a bit, he said. He stepped back into the river, scrubbing brush, the royal scrubbing brush came and he scrubbed between his toes and in his toes. And then he stepped out again, looked down at his feet. Dusty. <gasps> the king was cross. He called for his servant, Gabu. Gabu! Yes, your majesty! Gabu! The king is clean. My feet are clean. But the land is dirty. Dusty. I'll give you three days to rid the land of dust or zut. Zut is the sound of your head being chopped off. Oh, poor Gabu, what was he going to do? He put his hands on his head and think, think, think when something's dirty, you brush it. He called the townspeople and the villagers and the children who'd been calling him names and they got the brushes and the brews and they brush, brush, sweep, sweep, sweep. <coughs> The dust started to rise up into the air. <laughs> I can't see. <coughs> I can't breathe, said the king. Gabu. Yes, your majesty. I said, rid the land of dust, not fill the air with dust. You haven't got two days left. Or zut, off with your head. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Thought Gabu, he put his hands on his head and think, think, think. Well, when something's dirty, you brush it. When something's dirty, you wash it. He called the townspeople and the villagers and those children and they got buckets and filled them in the river and then they slush and they slush. They washed with soap and water to try and rid the land of dust. But water and dust, well, you know what that makes, don't you? Icky, sticky mud. And the muddy water rose up and up and up. And the king climbed up the palace hill. Gaboo! He called. Yes, your majesty. Gaboo! 
Gabu swam up through the muddy water. Gabu, I said, rid the land of dust, not turn it into a swimming pool. You've got one day left. Or zoot! Off with your head. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, Gabu, he put his hands on his head. I think, think, I wish I could just cover all this mess up. That's it, cover it up. The townspeople and the villagers and children with needle and thread and pieces of leather, they stitch, 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 so, so, stitch, made a big leather carpet and they spread it over the whole land until nothing else could be seen. The king took a step onto the leather. The carpet smooth and comfortable and clean. My feet are clean. They're not going to smell because they won't get dirty, said the king. Gabu, well done. Thank you, your majesty, said Gabu. Just then, out of the crowd came a little old man in a long, long beard. Everyone had forgotten about him. Your Majesty, said the old man, now you've covered the land with this beautiful carpet. The plants are underneath, the grass, the insects, the vegetables. What will the animals eat? What will we eat? We will be hungry. Now everyone was listening to him. Your Majesty, said the old man, you don't need to cover everything up. Let me help. And out of his pocket, he took a large pair of scissors, which of course had just been invented. He bent down and cut around one royal foot and the other royal foot. And then he pulled out string and string and he tied that leather around the king's feet so that it stayed on. Take a step, your majesty, said the old man, and he rolled back the leather carpet and the king, who could see how muddy and dusty the land was, he lifted up his foot and the piece of leather stayed tied on. And he put his foot down and he lifted his other foot up with a piece of leather and put his foot down and he took another and another step, step, step and when he looked his feet were still clean because of the leather underneath. This is amazing! Clean, comfortable, thank you, said the king and of course do you know what had been invented, don't you? It was shoes, the very first pair of shoes. And people have been wearing them ever since. But sometimes that king, that Raja back in India, you know, he still liked to kick off his shoes and feel the grass and the insects and sometimes even stamp his royal foot and feel a squelchy mud splat everywhere. But he always remembered to go down to the river and scrub his toes and feet until they were clean again because he wasn't going to be King Smelly Feet. So I hope you have a nice bath time today and um, maybe tell this story to someone else. Bye.